Hi again. So today we are going to continue where we left in the last class. Uh, we are going to continue with the control structure and today I will discuss about the repetitive control structures. Last time we discussed a few things about selective uh, control structure where uh, given a, uh, certain conditions depending on its uh, outcome of the condition you select a few of uh, executional statement so uh, there are many conditions uh, so today we will do a different kind of thing today uh, and again they will also depend on certain conditions but uh, before i uh, go further to the repetitive structure first of all i would like to uh, introduce a couple of more logical operators which are very frequently used in the conditions in the control structures so, so we start with the uh, uh, logical operators uh, first so these operators are used uh, for for what these operators are used for uh, for expressing uh, multiple conditions uh, like uh, in the last time we s saw simple conditions uh, to be tested uh, for control structure but now we uh, need to understand a, a couple of uh, compound conditions so when you have more than one possibilities then how can you how can you combine all of those so in in the, this language in c++ we have uh, defined three kind of logical operators one is called logical and logical or and logical not many of you who have uh, studied uh, electronics in your physics classes they know what the, the you must have heard about gates and gates or gate not gate uh, so th this is a similar kind of uh, concept uh, and means both of them are true or means either one of them and not of course means uh, when something is not true so these operators are binary operators that means they need two operands so one this side of this operator and one another one at this side but uh, this uh, exclamation sign which is a not uh, a logical operator it is a unary operator it only needs one argument so something uh, if you say not a that means a is not true okay so the syntax is something like that if you give a statement p ampersand ampersand q these are ampersand signs on your keyboard which are which is which is usually uh, located uh, with the number seven with a shift key if you press shift and seven then this uh, operator will come and if you press uh, uh, I think uh, this sign is uh, on some of the most of the keyboards it is above the uh, backslash sign uh, with the shift key on, on the, above the backslash so these are and you have to press it twice to get two of such things these are or and exclamation is of course uh, with the shift one it is on top of uh, the key one on your keyboard uh, so the if you if you type a statement p ampersand ampersand q uh, that uh, evaluates to true if and only if both p and q are true so this means uh, this means that uh, both of them are uh, uh, true so what does it uh, tell us it tell us uh, if you if you put this statement in parenthesis let's say parenthesis p ampersand ampersand q so this will give me an output of true only if both condition p and condition q are true then only it will give me a, if any of these conditions are false then it will give me a uh, output zero or uh, which is not true which it will give me false whereas a statement p in the or q or q evaluates to true if any one of them is uh, true uh, either p is true or q is true if any one of them is true it will give me true if both of them are true then all, also it is uh, it will give me true uh, so either p is true or q is true or p and q both are true it will give me true in the case of ampersand ampersand sign if p is true uh, and q is false then it will give me false if p is false q is true it will give me false if both p and q are true then only it will give me a true value okay Now the third one not p means uh, if p is false then not p will be true it's very straightforward so if p is true then not p is false so it's uh, very uh, it's it's uh, there's nothing to understand 
P true, not P means false. If P is false, not P means true. So this is uh, these are this is summarized in a truth table. It is called a truth table. So when they, you reveal the truth, uh, so uh, that's why uh, that is how it is uh, given here. Uh, you can uh, just look at this table. In fact, it's very easy to understand. You do not have to uh, put uh, too much mind into it. So if P is true, Q is true, there's one possibility. Then P ampersand ampersand Q would be true because both are true. And P or Q also will be true. If one of them is false, then P and Q will be false, but P or Q will be true. Similar case here. And if both of them are false, then P and Q is also false, and P or Q is also false. Very true. If P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. So that basically summarizes most of the logical operators which are compound operators uh, i'll give you some examples uh, where to use these control structures so let's say if you remember with the, one of the conditions we found the maximum of two numbers now if i want to find the maximum or minimum of three numbers there are more than these numbers then how to do that let's say these these are the uh, code uh, written for this to find minimum of three numbers. So let's say you the computer says see out and the three numbers So this will come out at the computer monitor and the three numbers See in you enter three numbers and one and two and then three which are already defined somewhere as in teacher or float whatever way you want to decide so n1 n2 n3 is are given now I have two conditions if n1 is less than or equal to n2 and n1 is also less than or equal to n3 then i will say minimum is n1 of course both both the conditions are true then this is the minimum if any one of them is false that means this is not the minimum and then i say if else if that is not true that means either n2 is minimum or n3 is minimum then what do you then you check the same condition on n2 then i say n2 is less than or equal to n1 and n2 is less than or equal to n3 then you say minimum is n2 if this is also not true then obviously the third option is uh, the minimum so otherwise then i'll say else see out the minimum is n3 so it's a very easy way to find the minimum of three numbers so uh, this uh, these uh, logical uh, operators are also used for short circuiting like that means you you skip uh, a lot of things so these ampersand, this and logical operator and or logical operator do not even evaluate the second operand. So, so if I, if I, so if any one of them makes it, uh, if, if it is not necessary to evaluate the second condition, it will not waste time the computer and it will not do that. So that is called a short circuiting. You just, uh, you got a, a sh sh short path. You just say, I, I just took a shortcut to go somewhere to reach you quickly so that saves time so let's say if p is not true if suppose you have p and q so this will only be true if any one of them is true so suppose computer finds of p is not true then it will not bother to evaluate q because the output is anyways going to be false so the q will not be evaluated similarly in p or q if p is true then q will not be true evaluated because this is already true if it is false, then it will evaluate Q and it will say, okay, if Q is true, then the resultant uh, condition will be true. So, uh, depending on the condition, this will uh, make uh, possible to get a shortcut. Like, uh, for example, we take a divisibility test, uh, whether a particular number is divisible by other. So, you enter two integers, then you input a couple of values d and n d is for denominator n is for numerator so if d is not equal to zero and n modulo d is equals to zero so so see if if uh, numerator is divisible by this denominator completely divisible then the um, their modulo will be zero because there will be no remainder it is completely divided divide divisible so uh, then i'll say d divides n okay Otherwise, I will say D does not divide N. Now, in this case, what will happen as if you see the shortcut, if D is 0, if D is 0, then 
this will be evaluated false d is not equal to 0 then the computer will not bother to uh, calculate this condition it will not uh, uh, find out what is the output of this condition because it is one of the condition is already false so it will quickly come here it will say d does not divide n so we will uh, uh, we avoid dividing by 0 we will take it otherwise the computer will get confused if d is 0 and computer tries to evaluate this then n divided by 0 it will be a very difficult thing for the computer to uh, do and your program will not uh, work properly so these kind of conditions uh, provide you a way of shortcut cutting the uh, time okay now we come back to the uh, control structures uh, while after discussing those logical operators few logical more logical operators now we do uh, we discuss more control structures which are governed by the repetition of the process so uh, in c++ we have three types of repetition structures or we also call them looping structures or loops because you go round and round in certain loops these are so three types of repetition structure to to execute statements repeatedly or while a condition remains true so it again depends on a condition uh, it keeps on repeating the things until this condition remains true as soon as this condition becomes false this repetition will stop so this condition is known as loop continuation condition so as long as this loop continuation condition is uh, true you will keep on doing same things again and again and again whatever is in the is in the uh, block of this uh, control structure it will keep on repeating itself again and again now the statement to be executed each time through the loop is called the body of the loop so after this statement you will be given a body of the loop and this body will be uh, will be repeating itself again and again now the, there are three looping structures as i told you the one is called a while structure another is do while structure which is which are very similar and third one is the for statement so while and for they they perform the action uh, these two in fact are ex almost same except one uh, exception the which i'll discuss uh, in, a, in a moment so while and for statements perform the action in their bodies uh, zero or more times so either it will not perform anything or it will perform more than one uh, if the loop condition is initially false suppose uh, my loop continuation condition is false then it will not do anything actually will not execute so these are called pre-test loop before doing anything you test it before that pre-test so you test it before looping whereas do while is a post test loop so before looping uh, you you test the condition after looping so this so what will happen this body will be done at least once and once it is done then this, this condition will stop so this is called a post test loop so first you loop once and then you test the uh, after the condition now there's there are two uh, major type of loops one is counter controlled loops or event controlled loops the, 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 the loops which are controlled by certain event or the loops which are controlled by a counter you you have a counter you keep on counting uh, suppose you do do the things uh, with the body uh, once then you say okay n equals one then you do it next time you say n equals two you do it next time n equals three and so on it, the counter keeps on increasing and you put a condition on the counter suppose n if you you say if n is greater than 100 stop suppose you want to do this action 100 times uh, then you perform this with the with the counter control loops so what is a counter control loop it repeats itself for a specified number of times whereas an event control loop repeats until some condition satisfied in the loop so it keeps on going it does not go for a specified number it keeps on doing itself uh, going on on and on, on and on until some some condition is becomes false so event control loops are generally used when the number of repetitions are not known before the loop begins executing if the number of repetitions are known if you know that you only have to carry out this uh, thing only let's say 50 times or thousand times or one million times then a con counter control loops are a much better thing uh, so counter control repetition is called a definite repetition whereas the event control repetition is a 
is an indefinite repetition where you do not know how many times the repetition will occur and uh, sometimes uh, uh, for a event control loop you need to give a sort of a sentinel value a, a, a fixed value which is uh, you sig to signal the day end of data entry a special data value which is called a sentinel value so suppose uh, these event control loops are given uh, you are inputting some data continuously of uh, different uh, maybe in a bank you are inputting uh, account numbers of several customers so uh, so then you do not know how many customers will come today so you cannot use a definite repetition you need to use an indefinite repetition and maybe in the towards the end maybe towards the even the evening time when all the customers are gone you put a data entry as zero and use in your program they it uh, indicates as soon as you enter zero the computer will stop this repetition will stop so this zero will be called a sentinel value so you usually keep this value which are usually not possible with the uh, usual input like an account number will not be a zero so when you enter zero as account number then it will signal the end of the data entry and the computer will stop so these are sentinel controlled so the sentinel value should be chosen so that it is not confused with the acceptable acceptable input value as i told you maybe uh, suppose you are uh, inputting somebody's marks and there are no such negative marking uh, so you you keep the sentinel value as uh, minus one so minus one nobody will get a minus one so as soon as you enter minus one your computer will stop but you have to put this condition in your program that uh, when n is equal to minus one then you stop so choosing a sentinel value which is also a legitimate data value will cause you a logical error suppose you choose the sentinel value as zero in marks and somebody actually got zero marks and you, as soon as you enter zero computer will stop it will not go further so that is that kind of uh, error should be avoided because these are logical errors and they, these are not detectable by your computer's compiler second statement is a while statement but the syntax for while statement is straightforward uh, sorry the first uh, uh, first repetition structure is while statement what is the syntax while given a expression or condition and then statement either a single statement or a body of statements so this expression is an integral expression and statement is any uh, executable statement or a set of executable statements if the value of this expression you check this condition if the value of this expression is zero or false then this statement is ignored and come program control will come jump here after the while statement so the program execution jumps to the statement following the while statement while statement finishes here and it comes after that if the value of expression is non zero then this statement will be carried out until after it carrying out my computer control will go back to while and it will again check the expression and if expression is still true it will carry out this again check it still true carry out this again go back so it will just go on in loop until this expression is false so when the value of expression becomes uh, non-zero uh, then it will uh, it, when it uh, is non-zero uh, or true then it keep on working uh, until the expression evaluates to zero so uh, it will only stop or go to the next uh, statement following the while uh, loop uh, when the expression becomes false uh, i'll give you so you understand this so let's say this is a counter control loop uh, a while loop you say int count equals one one these are uh, certain lines within your program i'm not uh, writing the whole program but a few line of codes int count equals one now i'm checking while count is less than or equal to 10 you say see out hello and line so you go to the next line and then i modify this so this modification is very very necessary to uh, have a condition true or uh, untrue so these are uh, these are uh, necessary conditions and uh, these conditions are very very necessary this is a this count is called uh, let's say a variable you can say n a b whatever i gave in the name as count this is called a counter or a loop counter or a counter control variable so there are three things which are necessary for a repetitive loop to work one is this 
variable should be initialized you initialize this you give it some initial value it must be incremented also otherwise the loop will become what will become infinite loop how suppose i do i skip this condition count equals to count plus one so i'll come here it say count equals one while count is less than or equal to 10 see out hello so present value of count is one so i will say see out hello i go to end line and then go back to while statement check counts value again it is still one so i'll again say hello i'll go back again say hello go back infinite number of time until you introduce this line by introducing introducing this line what happens count will be increased by one so after the first iteration count will become two so now here i'll check okay count is two which is still less than or equal to ten it will write hello then in the next step it will become three i'll again write hello so how many times i'll write hello ten times when after 10 times when i come back here because uh, ten, after 10th time what will be the value of count count equals 10 plus 1 which is 11 so now i come here count is greater than 10 so i will skip this portion i'll come here so this uh, while loop will write a statement hello uh, 10 number of times and then it will stop so uh, this uh, count must be incremented to stop this loop becoming an infinite loop so if this loop will never exit it will, so there has to be exit condition uh, for that this is the exit condition so three things are required for any repetitive loop a condition a initialization and a increment or decrement so updation i can call it update so you initialize a variable you put a condition on the variable and you update the variable within the loop then only this will work so counter control loop requires these things as i just to summarize that the name of the variable of course the initial value of the counter the loop continuation condition and the updation condition or the increment or decrement condition so these four things are required for a counter control so this is a now this is a sentinel controlled while loop so i'll just keep on summing the mass suppose i do not know how many uh, how many subjects are there in somebody's uh, uh, some some students uh, uh, branch so i'll just say int marks zero i want to find out their total and end of the input is i am indicating by entering minus one see how it is achieved so i'll say enter marks while marks is not equal to minus one i'm saying while marks are not equal to minus one then i keep on inputting marks c in marks total equals total plus marks so initially total is zero i enter the first marks so so the first total suppose i enter 57 first total will be 57 then marks are 57 so since marks are 57 so i enter uh, mark uh, again here I again say c in uh, marks are 57 so i marks again 40 so now the new total present total is 57 new total will be uh, 57 plus 40 97 now new total will be 97 okay then i say enter marks now I, now I say okay the subjects are finished i enter minus one so i say minus one total equals uh, uh, marks and then when when it enters minus one when i say ma minus one it just comes out of the loop it will say total marks equal to 97 so that is how it will uh, stop. Similarly, I can also find the greatest common divisor of two positive integers a and b by using this while loop. <clears throat> Suppose there are two uh, positive integers a and b and uh, I want to find out their greatest common divisor. So I will say while b is not equal to 0, that means uh, this remainder, so while r remainder is a modulo b. If, if uh, then a b is uh, uh, assigned to a and r is assigned to b uh, and then it will again go back to the while condition checks it again until b becomes zero when b becomes zero it comes out here and then i'll say that greatest common divisor of the two integers is a so that will be my greatest common divisor you can you should uh, run this program in your computer and see check with the uh, 
several examples whether this program works or not that is your assignment for today now uh, I, I'll just uh, summarize the control of flow in a while loop in a while loop you have a condition check the condition if it is false you go out if it is true you fall execute the statements go back check the condition true statement go back check the condition false come back come come out of this so that is how the control of flow of a loop works. Uh, now for loop how does a for loop work this is one of my favorite uh, loops which i use in my programs so the for statement is designed for a fixed number of uh, uh, thing so it's designed to simplify a counter control repetition very elegant uh, loop the syntax is uh, not very difficult straightforward all the three conditions are given right in the loop itself not within the body right here for in the parenthesis first you initialize the counter to give the condition then semicolon give the condition semicolon and the updation of that counter then you close the parenthesis and which is followed by the a statement or a group of statements so this initialization expression initializes the loops control variable and the condition determines whether loop should continue executing and update uh, what does update do update increments or decrements the counter variable so all the three conditions are given right here in most of the cases for statement and while statements are interchangeable so they all for statements can be represented by a equivalent while statement like this for condition can be written by like this also you initialize the variable then you write while this condition comes here this is the condition and then you give all the statements and then you give the update so update is here conditions are here initialization is here and statements are here so they are both of them are equivalent you can use any one of them whichever is convenient to you there is an example of a for loop uh, suppose i i know that uh, i have 10 numbers and i want to find their total or the sum so i say initially number and sum both are zero uh, and then enter the numbers see out then it goes into the for loop and it will accept numbers each time you don't have to say enter numbers again it will not go to see out so first of all you enter a number let's say you enter 2 sum equals so sum equals 0 plus 2 so new value of sum is 2 then it comes here uh, and and the, it is already updated i becomes 2 now so now again you have to number so give some number and uh, suppose you enter 5 then you uh, so new sum will be 5 plus uh, 2 plus 5 so new sum will be 7 then i and i becomes uh, 3 so again it goes back so it, it will go 10 times because each time you carry out this you update the value of i by 1 if it's i plus plus so i, I varies from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and these numbers can be any number so at, at uh, i equals to 3 we had sum equals 7 now suppose i enter 10 so now new sum will be uh, 7 plus 10 so new sum will be 17 and so on you will do it 10 times after 10 time i becomes 11 so when it checks this it says oh i is not less than or equal to 10 so it skips it comes out here it will give me the total sum some of the numbers is the present value of sum whatever is the current value of sum which is the a sum of 10 numbers so that will give me an output of uh, the total of 10 numbers so if the control variable is declared in the for loop itself then the control variable can be used only in the body of the for loop it is unknown outside the body of loop what does that mean see i i declared here i said int i equals one i was not known to the my computer program before this for loop and i end the loop here so i is also not known to the program here here if you say see out i then some garbage value will come the i will not be coming out as 11 or 10 because it is unknown outside the body of the loop so that is the uh, limits of this variable so it's basically a bound on the variable it is only known within this block okay so there may be uh, many control variables in a single for statement here i use only one but i can use more than more more than one control variables all those variables have to be initialized and incremented 
uh, and the conditions have to be given for all those variables. So you may have more than one, but these three have to be given for all of them. And uh, multiple conditions can be given here by separated by a comma. But for after each initialization, you should put a semicolon. Each condition you put a like a combination of condition you put say, so these are the initialization group you put a semicolon uh, conditional group you put a semicolon and updation group you put a semicolon you don't put a semicolon after that but multiple conditions will be separated by commas as uh, did here like here suppose I have two uh, such uh, control variables for I say int i equals one j equals twenty separated by comma then I put a colon, then I put conditions on both of them. i is less than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 10, and j is greater than or equal to 1. If these conditions satisfy, you keep on working. Both of them have to be satisfied. And then I say i plus plus, and j becomes j minus 2 e after each iteration. And then I write c i tab j. So this will leave me a blank. And then I go back here again. Uh, with the updated values of i and j, I, and then I skip this. You directly go to the condition. In the second iteration or the following iterations, you don't look at the initial condition, initialization value. You just look at the uh, present value of i and j and you apply these conditions on that. So the initialization, the loop continuation condition and the increment expression of a for loop can contain, instead of a very simple assignment statement, they can contain arithmetic expressions also. I can say i equals to x, so this is arithmetic expression, uh, and i is less than or equal to 4x square. So I can do the arithmetic uh, things there, and i I can update as y upon x, uh, i equals to i plus y upon x, and so on. So all these things, all of them can be an arithmetic expression also. When you place a semicolon after the right parenthesis of a for adder, suppose you put a semicolon here. That means it's an empty loop, it does not do anything. That is a logical error. It, the computer will accept it as it is, but it will not do anything. So, it uh, maybe you wanted to do something which you did not do. Now, any of these initialization and uh, conditional uh, initialization uh, statement, conditional statement, and increment statement of a for loop, they may be empty uh, here. Syntactically, they may be empty, but somewhere else they have to be defined. Remember that. So then, but the corresponding semicolons are required. I can suppose I left the initial condition here and updation condition here. I just put the uh, initialization statement skipped. Uh, conditional statement is there. Updation statement is skipped. But these semicolons are there. That because that is the only thing which a, a computer will be able to tell that this is the initial condition is not there. The initial statement is not there, conditional statement is there and updation statement is also missing. So the compiler should know that. But see in this program, I have already given this initial condition here. I have initialized it outside the loop. Sometimes you may have to do that. So I do not need to repeat that here. Similarly, this updation condition I gave here, i equals i plus 1. And so I do not need to give it here. So all these three can be uh, skipped. They may be empty, but these semicolons have to be there. Okay. The summarization of uh, for loop is like that. You have an initialization condition, then you test that condition. If it is false, cut out. If it is true, carry out the statements, update the code, and then go do not go back to the initialization code, just come back to the test condition. Keep on doing, keep on doing, keep on doing, unless it becomes false, then get out. So that is how the flow of control in the for loop works. The last uh, thing is a do while loop. A do while loop is exactly similar to while loop. Only thing is this is a post test loop. So you, you reverse this thing. While comes later. First of all you do something. Do all those statements and then you check on the condition while condition. So that is the only difference. In the while loop while was here there was no do while this condition and the statements. Here you have do these statements and while. So you, you note that as I told you before also this will at least work once because first of all you are carrying out the statement then checking the condition. So it will even if condition is false you have already carried out these statements. Now a do while statements ends with a semicolon. 
after the while you put the end semicolon here whereas in while you don't write semicolons here you write uh, all the semicolons in the statement lists now this is an example a while versus do while uh, see uh, i have int count equals one do this then update the condition and then check the, the condition if count is still less than 10 you keep on doing so at least once it will write me hello Whereas in while condition, suppose I define count, even if define count as 11 here, count equals 11, then also it will write hello, and it will say count equals count plus 10, so count becomes 12, then check on the condition. Even if it was 11, it did that because the condition was not, not checked until it carried out uh, the this statement once. So uh, same program is written in two ways, once during while, one is during do while. So sum equals to 0, count equals 1 while count is less than or equal to n i carry on sum sum equals sum plus count and then count plus plus here in do while you do this once and then you check on the condition now for n when n is greater than zero both the loops give same value of sum for sum you you just type these two uh, codes in your uh, compiler and then see how this works and check whether this statement uh, what I am giving is true or not that is uh, another assignment for today so for n equal to 0 both the loops give same value for sum but when n is not uh, when n is uh, let's say 0 or less than 0 then the two results will be different you just uh, check them and then let me know the uh, Control is like that. You carry out statements once, then check on condition. If it is false, get out. If it is true, go back, carry out statements again, check the condition, false, get out, true, go back, and so on. So that is how this loop, this do while loop will work. Okay. So now we know how control structures work in C++. How, how do you control the flow of uh, the program, the sequential flow? How do you change the sequential flow of the program that you do with the selective uh, control structures? Then, with the repetitive control structures, you uh, I, you make you you start iteration of the program. You make a loop sort of things, so which is uh, very very useful in in many situations. A uh, lot of times uh, we need to use. In fact, almost all your program will have to have some control structures without control structures you cannot do c++ programming uh, efficiently so uh, in the now in the next class we will learn a few things about uh, arrays where uh, where we combine uh, several objects of uh, similar type and we process them all together so we'll learn that in the next class see you then